JP Morgan, everyone's probably least favorite bank, to be honest, while well, Goldman Sachs and a few of the others are really up there as well, but they are launching their own crypto asset. And no one's really super excited about it, well, at least not within the cryptocurrency community. I'm sure there are a certain class of bankers and hedge fund managers who are going, ooh, JPM coin, just what I always wanted. But for the rest of us, we're a little bit more skeptical. Some people are saying that it shouldn't even be called a cryptocurrency, but I'm gonna be breaking down just what the JPM coin is. What does it mean for Bitcoin? What does it mean for XRP? And what does it mean for the crypto community as a whole? Now, before we do get into breaking down what the JPM coin is, I just want to give a quick note that the Ethereum Development Conference is gonna be happening in Sydney, Australia, the 8th to the 14th of April. I'm gonna be going. If you want to go along, there's a 10% discount code down below. It's not a referral link, just a way for you to save 60 bucks off of the ticket price. If you did want to come along to that community event, I'll be announcing a meetup outside of the conference, though, a bit closer to the time. So stay tuned for that, but details down below for the EdCon conference. Now, JP Morgan, the bank which is run by perhaps the world's smuggest and most arrogant man. At least that's what I always think when I see Jamie Dimon. He just has that look on his face that says, I am smugness. Dictionary definition, anyway. But we must remember that for all of his smugness, Jamie Dimon is just a human, and he does not deserve all of the hate that the crypto community gives him. Because remember that Jamie, just like all of us, was once a baby. We were all just babies as well as Jamie Dimon, and he is just on his spiritual journey with us. But man, that is one smug, smug-looking baby, isn't it? Anyway, JP Morgan, guys, it's big. Kind of a big deal. I know you've all heard about it, but how big is JP Morgan really? Well, it is massive. $2.6 trillion in assets, around $100 billion in annual revenue, and it moves more than five trillion dollars in wholesale payments every single day and it's got a quarter million employees so kind of a big deal it's used by the investment banking crowd the asset management crowd private banking private wealth management and the treasury and security services division so you can really tell who the jpm coin is designed for these are the organizations that are going to be using it not for you and me it's for those guys the JPM coin is a centralized, permissioned, censorable, blockchain-based liquidity tool. Many are even saying that it should not be considered to be a cryptocurrency. It's just a bank coin, which it is just a bank coin. But it does use cryptography and it does run on Ethereum. And even if it does all the things we don't like it to do, it still does have those factors backing it but it's really best described by Mark Yusko. He said, it is a digital token in a walled garden that is backed by fiat dollar designed by the elites to try to protect their incumbent franchise. That's a damn good explanation of what the JPM coin is. All that being said, let's break it down. The JPM coin is particularly designed to be a stable coin. They'll be starting off with US dollars, but they'll be expanding into other key currencies over time, like the euro, the British pound, the yen, the Hong Kong dollar, etc. So it will be a global currency, the JPM coin, within their permissioned network, that is. It'll be providing real-time gross settlement rather than waiting for days for payments to clear. Network participants can transfer tokenized fiat instantly, confidentially, and with full finality 24-7, which, as we all know, because we're all in cryptocurrencies, is a major improvement on the way things work currently. The previous model, apart from being slow, was also more prone to fraud and exposed to the old central bank failure and required multiple intermediaries across the interbank network. So, terribly inefficient, replaced with rather efficient. So it's a no-brainer why JP Morgan decided to launch the JPM coin. They've been in blockchain for a while, even if they repeat the blockchain, not Bitcoin mantra. The main use cases for the JPM coin will be international payments for sizable corporate clients, circumventing SWIFT, and circumventing XRP. 
Hmm, more on that later though. JP Morgan's token may also be used for securities transactions. JP Morgan has previously tested a debt issuance on the blockchain and the token will allow institutional investors to buy debt issuance. That's pretty big. So they'll also be issuing these kind of assets on the blockchain, so not just stable coins. So that's important to keep in mind as well. Corporations could also use the JP Morgan Treasury Service in order to take the place of their dollar holdings in their subsidiaries all over the world. So again, more ways for their big corporate clients to be able to move money back and forth. The JP Morgan coin will be on the Quorum blockchain. This is a permissioned version of Ethereum that JP Morgan has been using for some time. Like I said, JP Morgan's been into blockchain. In fact, a lot of the world's biggest banks are into blockchain. Bank of America is getting patents all the time. Goldman Sachs is into blockchain. Everybody loves blockchain. But not many of them are fans of Bitcoin. Remember, anytime you hear somebody saying that mantra, blockchain, not Bitcoin, those are the people you probably don't want to trust. Word, word of advice there, guys. Now, the Quorum blockchain has already seen institutional use cases with, for example, the Monetary Authority of Singapore and the Reserve Bank of South Africa, both exploring use cases for the Quorum blockchain. Financial institutions can trust that only authorized parties can join their private Ethereum network and that the transactions will be confidential. I understand the use case for a private blockchain. I really, really do. And it makes sense, but this is nothing that's designed for the general public. It's nothing that's designed for regular humans like you and I. This is for a very small group of elites to continue doing all of the malarkey that we know that they do. And speaking of that kind of malarkey, let's go over just a quick reminder of who JP Morgan is. Yes, they're huge. Yes, they do immense amounts of business. They have a giant revenue, massive amounts of staff. But JP Morgan is basically a criminal enterprise. And I mean that in the big sense that giant banks like this are essentially criminal organizations anyway. But here are just a few fines from the last year. If you go back in history, you can find dozens of fines yearly all around the world for doing basically the same kind of thing. So it's just a tiny tip of the iceberg, but it lets you know who JP Morgan is. JP Morgan was fined $65 million for trying to rig the benchmark rate. They were fined $1.6 million for failing to meet anti-money laundering and counter-terrorist financing laws in Hong Kong. Citigroup and JP Morgan both had to pay a combined total of $182.5 million. The banks are accused of having violated antitrust laws. Citigroup and JP Morgan allegedly manipulated the European Interbank Offered Rate. And it just goes on and on and on. Another $135 million over here for improper handling of American depository receipts. You have to understand that most of these situations, JP Morgan just pays the money. They get caught and they say, oh, just take the money. It's cool. How much do you guys want? We'll write a check for you. So in most of these cases, they're not actually found guilty of anything. They didn't, they settle right? So they don't end up breaking any laws because they just say, hey, take the money. It's all good. Everybody knows what went on here. Oops, our bad. Here's some money. And these fines sound like a huge amount of money. Like, you know, $60 million, $7 million. That's a lot of money to a lot of people, but not to J.P. Morgan. Remember, $100 billion in revenue last year. That's big. They can afford to pay these little fines off. It's just the cost of doing business. And it just keeps going and going and going. Fraud is the business model. Fraud, manipulation, this is how JP Morgan operates. And Jamie Dimon is a criminal in a suit. And if there was any justice in the world, people like Jamie Dimon would be behind bars, not sitting at the head of massive companies. But white collar crimes, when you get caught, you pay a giant fine and everybody goes out to dinner afterwards and pops a few bottles of champagne and laughs about how much money they made. That's the reality of JP Morgan. And the JPM coin is going to help enable this amazing process to happen. More rigging of rates, more screwing of regular people, more manipulating the economy, more manipulating of markets. It's what they do. 
Banks are about control. Banks are about fees. Banks are about fraud. Banks are about manipulation. And of course, we all know who the biggest money launderers in the world are. Everyone says, oh, but cryptocurrency is going to be used for money laundering. Get out of here. Get, come on, man. We all know who the biggest money launderers in the world are. It's the banks. They call London the money laundering capital of the world. Because the banks there are so open to laundering money. And everybody knows. It's an open secret. But nobody does anything. And then you wonder why we have to go through all this KYC and AML for using cryptocurrency exchanges. It's hypocritical. It's BS. But it's what it is. By the way, after the announcement of the JPM coin, JP Morgan stocks have gone up. Why? Because to JP Morgan's clients, this is a net positive. This is a welcome sign of innovation. Even easier money laundering. Better margins. Amazing. Who wouldn't get behind that? Assuming you're one of these big corporate clients that like to do these kind of things, this is going to be great for you, without a doubt. It will increase efficiency at JP Morgan. Now, what are the implications for some of the world's biggest cryptocurrencies? Well, we have XRP. So, it seems that XRP, the banker's coin, it seems that some banks want their own coin. Sorry, XRP fans, but that's the way it is. They don't want XRP for one reason or another. I mean, if XRP is so hot, why didn't JP Morgan just decide to use XRP? Will banks around the world, though, actually want to be using the JPM coin? Well, probably not banks that aren't JP Morgan. Remember, it's running on an internal private system that's permissioned and centralized and all that fun stuff. Will Bank of America have a Bank of America coin? Probably. Will other big banks have their own coins? Bank of China coin, the Bank of Thailand coin, Lloyd's TSB coin, and on and on and on? Very much could be the case. But... We have an interesting situation when it comes down to exchanging value between these banks. Because XRP is essentially a public ledger versus the JPM coin, which is private. We have a permissionless ledger versus a permission ledger. We have JP Morgan controlling JPM coin, but they do not control the XRP ledger. Remember, the banks like to have control. And other banks are going to think like J.P. Morgan. But it comes back to this. There is still plenty of hope for XRP. For some of you are going to go, oh, XRP. But this is the reality of the situation. I could deny reality or comment on what's probably actually going to happen if Ripple's 200 partner banking network actually start using XRP, at least the big banks, not the tiny banks, we know that the model of banks is fraud, manipulation, all this stuff. So is Bank of America going to go to JP Morgan and use the JPM coin? Probably not, because Bank of America knows what they do, and they know what JP Morgan do, and they probably don't really trust each other all that much. There'll be situations in which they collaborate for enhanced manipulation. But overall, they all know what's up, and they all know they can't really trust each other because they're all working in a zero-sums game where in order for J.P. Morgan to win, Bank of America has to lose. And there's some situations where Bank of America and J.P. Morgan come together so that HSBC loses. But overall, they're working against each other in a zero-sums, everybody-for-themselves kind of thing. So that in mind, we may not see the G JPM coin actually seeing very much interoperability between banks. Therefore, you might need some kind of bridge. And that bridge could end up being XRP. What about the implications for Bitcoin? I don't think this has many implications for Bitcoin at all. Honestly, if you like Bitcoin, you have nothing of interest at all in a JP Morgan coin. It's the antithesis of what Bitcoin is. Bitcoin has amazing, unique, value propositions, and this is not a threat in any way to Bitcoin. Potentially even a benefit if we see JP Morgan clients using the JP coin 
to buy Bitcoin, but that's a speculative statement at best. But it is kind of funny to see how blockchain friendly JP Morgan is with Jamie Dimon always bashing Bitcoin, but he can't control Bitcoin. It's harder for him to manipulate the price of Bitcoin. And he has manipulated the price of Bitcoin before. We've seen some of his statements and the market effect that that has had. But he can't control it. JPM coin, direct control over it, and it's theirs. That's not Bitcoin. So I understand why Jamie Dimon is not a big fan. Also worth remembering, too, is that JP Morgan, at least the rumor currently is, is that they're going to be using BACT for their clients who want to purchase and invest and hold Bitcoin. So the JP Morgan coin, it doesn't have anything on Bitcoin, and I don't see it as any threat at all to Bitcoin. Bitcoin is superior in every way. JP Morgan coin is not something for any of us. But then again, it was never meant for us. It's not meant for you. It's not meant for me. It's not meant for Bob and Sally and your Uncle Tom. None of us. It is designed for a very small group of elite financial players. And we're not in that club. And we never will be. And they don't want us to be. And we don't want to be either. This is meant to make money for the rent-seeking middlemen who plague our financial system. And even if we could go out and get our hands on some JP Morgan coin, I mean, why would you? Why wouldn't you just go buy Bitcoin? Be crazy. Again, it is for a tiny group of elites. But for the clients who do want it, it's probably going to prove to be pretty popular. Wall Street's not our ally. They never have been. Bitcoin was created because of Wall Street fraud, as the antithesis to Wall Street. So for the clients of JP Morgan, they're probably going to have great cost savings and better ways to launder money and commit fraud manipulation. The rest of us are just going to keep on buying Bitcoin and ignoring what JP Morgan does because they're not our friends. JP Morgan may have been one of the first banks to announce bringing out their own coins, but we will see many more big bank coins coming in the future. And when all of those other ones come, the same conversation can be had because there's no reason to be excited about any of them. But there are a million and one reasons to be excited about Bitcoin. Anyway, just my two Satoshis on the JP Morgan coin. You'll let me know what you think about it down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a thumbs up on it. If you're new around here, subscribe to the channel. You can always hit that notification bell down below to stay up to date when I put out a new video. You guys are super awesome, by the way. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Long live the blockchain, and peace out till next time.